Siang Yu is making a lot of ways in Rise of Kingdoms, so I want to give you the best talent and pairing there is. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Rise of Kingdom video. My name is Legend Ronnie and today we have Xiang Yu. I'm going to max kill him and I'm going to give you the best pairings and talents for him. Since he came out, I had my eyes on him. I just wanted to make sure that I'm doing the right decision where I'm going to put my sculpture. So in this video, I'm also going to max kill him and I'm going to bring him to level 60 because I have noticed him in the champions of olympia that he is making a lot of waves so i definitely want to test him there i've seen in arc of osiris that he is great so a lot of reasons to max siang Yu. if he's going to be great or really great on the field battle i'm gonna find out because hey i'm going in kvk in just a couple of days we will have pre kvk in about a day or so so i'm definitely gonna test him out on the field as well and then give my final thoughts about that but as far as rallying and events, he is an exceptional commander. So it's definitely something that I want to have as well. A couple more things to know about commanders. Talents only work from the primary commander. Same is equipment only works from the primary commander. The second in command is only a skill carrier. So make sure you have the right talents and equipment when you make your marches for the field. Now let's go ahead and let's max kill him. If you notice over here, I have 1,353 sculptures. I plan to max another commander and that is the Bukhanazar before the battle is gonna start in my KVK, whoever is gonna be our opponents. But in the meantime, let's just max kill Xiang Yu. And the moment we've all been waiting for, expertise attained. Unbeatable warlord. Well, we'll find that out if that is true, but hey, he's a great, great cavalry commander. Now it's time to get him to level 60. That shouldn't take very long as there is plenty of experience to go through. I first didn't really want to get him to level 60 right away. I usually don't do that because I still kill barbarians and all that, but there's so many events that I can profit from and I have so much experience. I was like, what am I keeping all this experience for? So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. He is level 60 and max kill, just like that, <laughs> snapping my fingers. Yeah, I should have done that. I haven't done that in a while. My lucky fingers. Another Cav Commander to the collection, a uh, max skill Cav Commander to the collection. I'm definitely looking forward to test him out, try him out and see what he can do. But from what I have seen, he is really, really good. Now let's get into his talents. Let me give you his best talents. After that, I'm going to go into the pairings and show you who I'm going to pair him with and uh, with who I'm going to test him out. Since he is a conquering, he has a very nice part of the conquering talent tree that I like, and that is going for the buckler shield. But since he has the skill, there's a couple more important talents that you can get, and that is always going for the clarity and rejuvenate. This is kind of the minimum. This is like the base start of your skills talent tree, having the clarity and rejuvenate. After that, on the calf tree, you have a blasonate shield, even though you get a lot of march speed on the way but i'll be very honest it makes sense why they added all this march speed because this is a very powerful talent there's 12 percent skill damage reduction that you get after that you definitely want some rage so you want to go for undying fury halbert is a very nice uh, talent as well and then you want to make sure that you get your buckler shield and you got three points in the buckler shield and how about that? You have three more talents and exactly enough for 3% attack. Probably not the best stat that you want for caps, considering all the attack bonuses that you get in KVK right now from the crystal tech and so on. But hey, it's just something extra. It's definitely helping. That 1% health would have been very, very nice to get. But honestly, there's nowhere you can drop talent. So this is all important talents that you got right now. This is going to be my go-to talents because... On his primary skill, you see the rage requirement. He only has 900, so this not going to be very long. It's not going to take you very long to acquire that rage. And then you have his uh, fourth skill, which says, while on the map, active skills cost is reduced by 50 rage. You need to take him out of the city, and then he will need 850 rage for his primary skill, same as Genghis Khan. 
And that is one of the reasons why I'm maxing Xiang Yu, because I'm using Genghis Khan right now. In my field battle marches, Genghis Khan is part of it. And Xiang Yu is just a better version of Genghis Khan, because as you see, Genghis Khan has 950, and with his second skill, that's 850. Xiang Yu is the man <laughs> who is much better than Genghis Khan. <laughs> with 850 rage requirement to pop skills, same 1700, hits multiple targets, I'm not happy that it reduces the damage by 25% for each additional target, but he does reduce the defense of the target, which that's make, make him seem very nice, because you have second in command, which will always hit harder on the target, because the target is already reduced by 30% defense. Not to mention that because of the talents from the skill talent tree, you also have clarity and all for one, which again is boosting your second in command. So that's a nice combination if you have a powerful skill damage as a second in command. Now I want to give you another talent tree because maybe some of you just want to try the Feral Nature. The only way I would use Feral Nature with him and drop the Buckle Shield deal is if you really want him to pop skills really really fast like you don't care for the long battles because on the long battles to be honest feral nature might not be as helpful a buckle shield is 100 percent much better on the longer fights but on the short term fights the feral nature will help you out generate rage fast and then you probably refresh you go out you refresh you go out that's why so many of my field battle marches have feral nature because how long can you fight with a march or when you're swarming a march or in a murder ball, right? You keep going in and out, in and out. So it's short term fighting in a murder ball unless you have richards or commanders that sustain uh, or have a lot of healing to keep regenerating and regenerate troops back. Or if you're really that lucky and you weren't hit. But um, Feral Nature is still another nice way how you can go with this commander. I want to give you options just in case you want to try them out and this would be the way how you can go with Feral Nature. You still get the Halberd, you still get the Undying Fury and all that, you're just not getting the 3% attack and the Buckler Shield. That's why I'm going with this one because like I said 850 Rage is not a whole lot so this commander will most likely pop his skills fast enough compared to my other commanders. Now let's get into the pairings and who am I going to pair him with? The most common pair that I have seen him with and people use him is with William because he is popping skills very fast. William does AoE and you benefit from the 4 skill of William which doesn't have any cooldown. So the more times in a murder ball you have William popping skills and Xiang Yu, you're debuffing targets and you're buffing your marches and your allies and you're doing AoE and William has March speed reduction and yo extra skill damage from buff cannot take effect and yeah that's a very very nice pair but the problem is would you use this on the field battle i mean this march has no defense and on top of that you have the four skill of xiang yun when this is stacked up all the way that's a nice damage bonus when it's stacked up by the way but it's also a lot of march speed reduction that's 60 percent and i have seen him with max stacks and he's like an old granny who's trying to cross the street and she needs help from everyone else so pretty much not very helpful when you try to run away or when, when you try to back down so this is why i really need to see on the field if he is gonna be really that good because this force skill is kind of make him just a one-way trip and with william you do have to realize that when people swarm you i mean Oh, jeez Louise, you're not going to enjoy that build, I'm telling you. I have also seen him being used with Chandra Gupta, Xiang Yu being first, Chandra Gupta being second, because Chandra Gupta has a very nice third skill, which stacks up pretty fast, and you get 15% health and defense reduction on the target. With a 50% chance, that doesn't take long, maybe 5 turns, that's like 5 seconds. And 20% cap health, health which is very needed, right now on the battlefield so we can reduce the dead or the severely wounded that we get you know less hospital bills that's what everyone is looking for so xiang yu and chandra gupta it's also a very nice pair that is being used 
I have seen him with Saladin as well, Xiangyu and Saladin, but the problem is that Saladin has a plethora of utilities. I mean, Saladin being used primary, he's really good. And I mean really, really good. I like Saladin a lot. And I wouldn't really put Saladin second to Xiangyu because you have too many commanders you can put Saladin with. Like you can put an Edelflat second to Saladin. Uh, you can put anything you want to think about second to Saladin. You can do Saladin and William. You can do Saladin and Chandra Gupta. You can do Saladin and Genghis. So any kind of ideas that you have in mind, Saladin and YSG, they just work. So there, this is the reason why I wouldn't put Sardin second to Xiang Yu. You need to find different combination for your Xiang Yu. And another combination that I'm gonna try that for field fighting is gonna be with Takeda second to Xiang Yu. Because I was mentioning that the reason I max Xiang Yu is because I'm planning to replace my Genghis. You're also saying that he has over 50 million kills. So Genghis being primary and Takeda being second was one of my field marchers now that i got I max out xiang yu for field fighting i plan to do xiang yu and takeda if he's gonna be targeted and 100 percent he will be targeted i'm 100 percent sure of that because i know how my gang is used to be at least takeda will offer him some protection you get 40 percent defense from the third skill of takeda and then you get a little bit of skill damage reduction and you get normal attack and counter attack damage reduction with a chance. Troops led by this commander take 5% reduced skill damage and have a 10% chance when attacked. So pay attention to that. It means that even when you're retreating, you have a chance to activate this normal attack and counter attack damage. So most likely you're going to activate it, especially if the march get is swarmed. That's why Genghis and Takeda was working so well. Because you're pretty much getting this skill when you get swarmed pop all the time so you have a large amount of chances of getting away from the battlefield before getting demolished xiang yu and takeda i would say that it will be the go-to march for field fighting when is the giant giant murder balls you'll probably be able to use a william or a chandra gupta if you want it's such crowded there that you can't really tell who is who but once it gets to flag fighting and people can cherry pick targets they will definitely pick a xiang yu as they used to go for my genghis like i was mentioning my genghis was always the superstar of the field <laughs> battle always a target but i knew that i had a a second to him so it was kind of of um trap march for me i was always knowing that uh, he is the one getting targeted rarely i was seeing my guanyu getting targeted or my sardin getting targeted or my ramses getting targeted it was genghis because everyone knows he gets slow the moment he gets attacked and he's just easy kills xiangyu will be the next easy kills the next target that people will go to so that's why my recommendation, if you want to use him for field fighting, you want to put something very strong as a second to him. But that will definitely help you out in Champions of Olympia, Ark of Osiris, or Cyrus League, or any other events where you don't care about the really wounded dead troops and so on. Or when you rally, I was mentioning Xiang Yu and Chandra Gupta, it's a well-known rally composition. So that definitely works, and I highly recommend to use that. But field battles is a different bread. That's the one place where you need to be very very careful how you use your marchers and what kind of combinations you make in this event it's a whole different story for sunset canyon i also seen him work with william is working really great or with sardin so that's another place where you don't care about your severely wounded you just care to use something that works so if you want to use him for sunset canyon or lost canyon he's working but um like I was mentioning, field fighting, it's a whole different story. And you're probably wondering, Julius Caesar, Mehmed, Frederick, and various other commanders, Minamoto and Double C. Once you get to this kind of season of conquest commanders, you need to drop this idea. I was already mentioning his weaknesses, his defense, that he gets slow. Now, what do you want? You want to reduce his defense even further by another 10%? <laughs> That's not going to be the situation. So double C, I just don't. It's very long time since I don't use double C anymore. He was great, you know, in the first few KVKs. KVK 1, 2, 3, double C was great. Same as Miramoto, but once you get into the season of conquest, a lot of commanders drop in utility. Even Genghis drops in utility. 
because you have Xiangyu. Why would it worth it to invest in Genghis when you have Xiangyu? So the game is changing. We need to change as well. An interesting pair for your Sansei Kenyon, because I was mentioning, is with YSG. I have seen him work. Xiangyu first and YSG as a second in command. That's also a solid pair for um, that type of event. But for, let's say, uh, any other event, you want to pair him with some calf commanders. So my recommendation is, if you want to work on Xiangyu, it's definitely worth it. But make sure you have something like William to put as a second to him. Or you have something like Takeda for your fear fight. Or at least a Chandra Gupta. So that would be the two pairs that I would use for field. I would, it would be either with Takeda or the second one, it would be with Chandra Gupta. There is no other way I would use Xiangyu on the field. Sardin is out of the question because there's plenty of utility with Sardin. Or with Genghis, I mean, let's face it, if he's winning one versus one, Xiangyu and Genghis, that's nice. You know, just hospital bills. <laughs> Xiangyu and Genghis on the field fighting. Maybe in events, like I was mentioning, Champions of Olympia, Ark of Osiris and so on, is definitely worth it. But William would be a much better pick than Genghis. Let me know in the comment section below what you think what parents will you think it will work the best with Xiang Yu? My advice is that he is a worthy cavalry commander, worth your investment, worth your time, worth everything. I really like him though. And now I get a chance to test him out in KVK and in various events. So until next time, this is your boy Legend Ronnie signing off. Peace out, yo, and take care. See you on the next one and stay safe out there, my friends. Who's in Kodan?